Welcome back to my channel. Today I got this sticker that says just let luck do the work and I found it exactly what I need because I have been doing daily updates since 1st of January and now we're in May. It had been more than four months I've been doing daily updates on YouTube but my channel is not exactly picking up right now. I still need some time and some luck and let luck do the work. Well, yeah, it's cute. I got it in the Art Beijing Art Fair. Yesterday I visited one of their pavilion and I was so happy with the results, people that I've met there. It was super interesting. So today I decided to go back to the China Agricultural Exhibition Center to visit the rest of the three pavilions. As soon as I entered the Agricultural Center, I was very lost because I didn't see Art Beijing anymore. I saw Design Beijing. I went in and I asked the staff, where is Art Beijing? And they told me, this is Art Beijing. I was like, no, this is Design Beijing. They told me it was the section of Art Beijing that is Design Beijing. And I had to say that it was completely different. You could see some fashion design, interior design, and I got this sticker inside of this interior design form and they have this lucky drawer. You just swipe your phone, add their WeChat, and then you get this coin and you do the, like a lucky drawer. I didn't get lucky so I got a lucky sticker which was cute and after that I saw some more design gadgets and all these toys and books and all different things and I saw this Spanish flag I was like oh my flag because I have been living in Spain for such a long time and I felt home when I saw this Spanish flag. I went talking with them they're from an architecture firm called CRG Architects the main founder was Spanish Carlos Gomez and I had a talk with him, very interesting. I asked him about doing business for the last six years in China. What was the main difference, like the cultural difference working in the creative industry? And he told me that the main difference was the clients. Clients in China were a lot more demanding they would want to be your friends and have a personal connection with you before paying you and doing business with you. And it's a lot more difficult to maintain because they are very demanding, like a very demanding girlfriends, I guess. And he felt like very different from what he had experienced doing business in Europe. And I would say it, I felt like the same. I was so surprised going back to China, seeing that the Chinese business world was so drastically different from the rest of the world. The teammate of Carlos also told me the same, that he felt not only externally to your clients that you have to maintain a very close personal relationship, also within your team that you have to do a lot of outside of work team activities to get the energy going. And it's different than Europe. In Europe, we say life work balance, but in China, life is work, work is life. And you have a balance, but these two things are literally the same thing. So it's very different when you talk about work life balance and when you talk about the dynamics in the business world. And after that, I went to hunt for this young artist section because it was such a famous section a lot of people told me about that is a must see. When I entered this pavilion, this wing, it was again completely different from what I have experienced yesterday. Yesterday in the Art Beijing main pavilion, you could see established artists, internationally well-known artists and a lot of high-end, highly priced merchandise and artworks and prints and everything was a little bit more pricey. And in this young artist section, you could see everything was fairly priced and the style was much more younger, brighter. And I'm so happy to see that young artists born after 1980s were giving a chance to exhibit, to show their art at the same time. Not exactly in the same venue, but in the same art fair with their older masters. You could see that each young artist got their own section, their own walls, with their own names written big on the walls so that people got to know their works and got to know their names. And it's a very good feeling. And I think it really boosts the uh, confidence of young artists. And perhaps because of this, they would want to stay inside of the fine art market instead of going to art teaching, going to perhaps other kind of uh, commissioned works. and. It's a career boost for many emerging young artists who were struggling. 
I was so happy to see this and I was going crazy but unfortunately the fair started to close and everybody was wrapping up so I had this last opportunity to talk to someone was wrapping up and she was a curator she developed her own art merchandise brand as you can see this is called to be continue I'm not sure why her brand was called to be continue because it was not grammatically accurate or correct but perhaps to be continued was already registered so she had to do a make-do modification to be continued she told me that she founded this art merchandise brand just over a year ago and she has a shop on Taobao she also goes to different art fairs and different events and she's doing very well she mainly does works of her friends because she had been a curator so she knew a lot of artists she was not really eager to do uh, people outside of her friend circle and perhaps because of the rights you know the communication would be harder the contracts would be a lot more complicated and the risks and perhaps I'm not very sure but I had talked with her about bringing perhaps foreign artists to China using her existing network existing channels and she was very open to that so if you're interested in selling your art merchandise with her or in China in general drop me a comment below perhaps I could hook you up with her and I was really exhausted so I had to go home but I had a fruitful day I hope you enjoyed this video leave me a comment below for anything you would want to know that's all for today thank you very much for watching see you in the next video